Horizontal scroll animations have been a growing trend for quite some time now, frequently being used on many award-winning websites. So I thought this would be the perfect time to explore the technique and show you how to bring it to your own projects to keep your website competitive. While we often draw inspiration from recent SODD winners, last week I took a dive into older winners. That's when I stumbled upon this website with an impressive scroll animation that really caught my attention. What stood out was this particular section with horizontal parallax text and floating cards that transformed and rotated as you scrolled. I was so inspired by this that I created a similar version using JavaScript to demonstrate how you too can build such advanced scroll animations with simple JavaScript, GSAP and scroll trigger. In today's video, I'll show you how to create this horizontal parallax effect with animated cards all powered by Lenny Smooth Scroll. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I would appreciate if you drop a like and if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more content like this. You can also find the source code through the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into it. Let's begin with the HTML structure. First, I'll add a simple navbar with a logo and a couple of navigation links. You don't necessarily need this, it's just a placeholder for now. Next, we'll structure our page into three main sections. The hero section, the sticky section and the outro. The hero section will remain empty for this example. Now moving on to the sticky section. This is where the main horizontal scroll effect will happen. I'll add a header with a class name sticky header which will house an h1 element for the title. Then we'll add the cards. Each card will be wrapped inside a div with the class name card and I will divide it into two parts. The card image and the card content. The card image will simply contain an image element and the card content will be split into the title and description. I'll use an h2 for the title and a paragraph tag for the description text. For now, I will add some placeholder content in both. I'll then duplicate this card four more times, updating the placeholder content for each one. Finally, the outro section will contain just a simple paragraph. And that's our basic HTML structure. Let's move on to the styling. We start with a universal selector to remove the default margin and padding from all elements and set box sizing to border box. For the HTML and body, I'm setting the width to 100 viewport width and the height to 800 viewport height since we want some scroll room for the scroll effect. I've also set a custom font to give it a slick and modern look. The images will take up their containers full width and height and I've added object fit cover to make sure they scale nicely without distortion. Next, for the nav, it's positioned absolutely at the top of the page and spans the full width. We have got some padding and flexbox to align the logo and nav items neatly. The nav links are styled with a simple design, no text decoration, black color, a slightly larger font size with reduced letter spacing for a sharper look. The main sections are all set to take up the full viewport width and height with hidden overflow to handle the animation smoothly. For the hero section, we'll add a background image and set background size to cover to ensure it covers the entire area. The outro section content is centered both horizontally and vertically with a dark background and some light color text to create contrast. The paragraph inside is styled with a decent font size and just a tiny bit of letter spacing to keep it clean. Now for the sticky section, I have set its position to relative with the light background color. The sticky header is absolutely positioned, stretched across 250 viewport width to accommodate the horizontal scroll. I 
I'm using will change transform to optimize its performance during the animation. Inside, we have got a big H1 with a font size set to 30 viewport width to make it super prominent and we have kept it lightweight with a little negative lighter spacing to make it look even more striking. Next, we have the cards. Each card is absolutely positioned with a dark background, rounded corners and padding. Again, I'm using will change transform for smoother animation during the scroll. For the card content, we are using Flexbox to organize the title and description and their style with a lightweight font and minimal letter spacing to keep the design cohesive. Lastly, I have added a media query to ensure the navigation aligns properly on smaller screens. We also have few lines of CSS here to enable smooth scrolling thanks to the Lanis library which we'll use for that smooth scroll effect. And that's the styling. Now let's dive into the JavaScript. We'll start by setting up everything once the DOM is fully loaded. First, we initialize Lenis which will handle the smooth scrolling effect throughout the page. You find this block of code on their documentation website but let me just go through it in short. We attach an event listener to the scroll event so that every time you scroll, Lenis triggers an update for scroll trigger. Next, we add a custom animation frame request using GSAP sticker. It allows Lenis to update its animations at the right time giving us that smooth scroll effect. Then we also register GSAP scroll trigger plugin which will handle the scroll based animations we'll be applying to the sticky section and the cards. Now we grab some elements from the DOM, the sticky section, the sticky header and all the cards inside this section using document.querySelector and query selector all. Finally, we calculate the height of the sticky section. Here, we are setting it to 5 times the window height, ensuring the scroll animation has enough space to play out. Before we jump into the animations, we need to define the transformations for each card. I'll create an array called transforms which holds the vertical positions and rotation values for each card. Each item in this array represents a card and contains two sets of values. The first set is for the Y position and the second set is for the rotation. For example, the first item in the array represents the first card. The values inside represent the vertical positions that card will move through as it scrolls. Similarly, the second set represents how much the card will rotate during the animation. We'll use these values later to smoothly move and rotate each card based on the scroll progress. Next, we start by creating a new scroll trigger instance with the create function. The first thing we define is the trigger, which is our sticky section. Next, we set the start point. This is where we want the scroll animation to begin. In this case, we are using top which means the scroll will trigger when the top of the sticky section reaches the top of the viewport. For the end point, we use a dynamic value of sticky height. This ensures that the scroll animation lasts for as long as the height of the sticky section which we have already set to 5 times the window height. 
then we enable pin which pins the sticky section in place as we scroll through the page. Now we'll use on update callback to track the scroll progress and move the sticky header. We start by getting the progress value which ranges from 0 to 1 as the user scrolls through the section. Next, we calculate how far the header needs to move horizontally. We get the maximum translation distance by subtracting the viewport width from the sticky header's width. Using that, we calculate translate x by multiplying the scroll progress with the maximum distance, moving the header from right to left. Finally, we apply this transformation using the set function, creating the smooth horizontal scroll effect for the header. Next, we are animating each card as we scroll, so let's break down exactly how we do that. We use the for each method to loop through each card in the cards list. We want each card to start its animation at slightly different times to create a staggered effect. To achieve this, we calculate a delay for each card. The delay is calculated by multiplying the card's index by 0.1. So for example, the first card has no delay, but the second card will start a bit later and so on. Once we have the delay, we calculate the card's progress through its animation. We subtract the delay from the overall scroll progress and multiply the result by 2 to speed up the animation. However, we want to make sure the progress value stays between 0 and 1, so we use the max and min functions to clamp the value. This ensures that the animation starts at 0 and ends at 1, even if the scroll progress moves faster or slower. If the card's progress is greater than 0, we start animating it. First, we handle the horizontal movement. We set two fixed positions for the horizontal animation, card start x to 25 and card end x to minus 650. This means that each card will move from 25% to minus 650% along the y axis as we scroll. To calculate where the card should be based on its progress, we use the interpolate function. This function takes a start value, an end value and the progress between them and returns the correct value for the current progress. In this case, it interpolates between card start x and card end x based on the card's scroll progress. For the vertical movement, we use a set of predefined positions from the transforms array we defined earlier. Based on the scroll progress, we calculate which part of the animation the card is in and interpolate between two vertical positions to find the exact spot. The same approach is used for rotation as well. We take the predefined rotation values from the transform array and interpolate between them to smoothly rotate the card as it moves. Finally, we use set function to apply the x and y positions, rotation and set the card's opacity to 1 so it's visible. If the progress is 0 or less, we hide the card by setting its opacity to 0. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.